Rocky. Rocky. Can we test it out?
Good morning, church. Good morning. God is good. All the time. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome you all to Hope Community Church. And we thank God for your presence and willingness to come and praise the Lord in the house. And those who are watching online as well, we want to welcome you. Especially today is a special service. And today is a Palm Sunday. That's why you've been given the palms. We're going to celebrate the palms. Uh, the, the, uh, the day Jesus Christ was going through Jerusalem so that he can give his life for you and me. Amen? So it's a very important service today and fully believe that God is going to bless us all. And we want to thank God. I want to thank God for the, for the voice of God to step up and also lead the whole service today. Our brother Jacob, I don't know if he's watching us, flying back or whatever he is, but uh, uh, we thank God uh, wherever he is and God bless him. Um, let's begin our service with prayer. Let us pray together. I put in something on Facebook. I, I'm, I have a Facebook. I'm your pastor. I have a Facebook too. And so <laughs> I put something on Facebook that says, if you only pray when you're in trouble, then you're in trouble. Amen? If you only pray, you keep your prayer and say, I'll pray only when I have a problem, then you have a problem already. You're in trouble. So be a necessity in our lives. Amen? Not an option. We are called to pray as a church, as an individual, as a Christian believer. Prayer must be part of your life. You walk as you pray. You do, everything has to be centered, surrounded by prayer. Amen? Even Jesus himself said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Why prayer? Because when we pray, we sing well. When we pray, we preach well. When we pray, we love each other well. When we pray, we forgive. When we pray, we give. When we pray, we serve. When we pray, we even go further for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ because God is the one who's doing the work. So I'm going to invite you now to bow your head or you can come here and pray with me. We are, gonna, we are going to pray together in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You are holy, 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 Alleluia, Alleluia. Merci, Seigneur. Merci Seigneur, merci Seigneur, merci Seigneur, merci Seigneur, Alléluia, Alléluia. You are mighty, 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 Alléluia. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace to sing hallelujah. Lord, we come before your throne of grace to sing hosanna. Hosanna, hosanna to the son of David. Blessed are you. We praise you for your presence, holy Jesus. We give all the glory and the honor for your presence in our ministry in Jesus' holy name. Father, we pray according to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, open the floodgate of heavens and pour out your Holy Spirit in Jesus' holy name. Let your Holy Spirit bless us this morning. Let your Holy Spirit heal us. Let your Holy Spirit, hallelujah, set us free from addiction. Let the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, be at work in Jesus' holy name. Father, we speak the presence of the kingdom to come over this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, I speak the presence of the kingdom, your kingdom to come in our homes, your kingdom to come in our lives, your kingdom to come in our church, your kingdom to come in our singing, your kingdom to come in our preaching, your kingdom to come in our, in our daily walk, your kingdom to come, your kingdom, your kingdom, Christ the Lord, when you came into this world, you preached by saying, repent, because the kingdom of God is my, at my hand. I speak the power of the kingdom, the heavenly kingdom in Jesus' holy name. We bless you, King of kings, the Lord of lords, in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up, oh God, and my brothers and sisters, those who have brought any concern before you, I speak the power of the grace in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. To hear their prayers and answer their prayers, we speak for miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Christ the Lord in Jesus' holy name. Heavenly Father, as we come this morning to worship you, we do remember your son Jesus Christ the day he entered Jerusalem. Father God, people did sing Hosanna. I pray for each and every soul, here in person and online. Whatever God they have it, Lord Jesus Christ, in their heart, may your presence enter their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Allow them to sing Hosanna this morning. Let them sing Hosanna, son of David, into my life in Jesus' holy name. We bless you, King of kings, the Lord of lords. We silence evil spirit from every direction in the name of Jesus Christ. Satanic spirit, demonic spirit, which God spirit, the spirit of Jezebel. We silence you now in Jesus' holy name by the power of the Holy Ghost. We claim what belongs to us, peace and joy, victory, healing, success, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As we, as we submit our lives to you this morning, we pray for the heavens to, sing, to worship with us. Let your presence be revealed this morning. Let your presence touch, O oh God, the world you have created. We give honor and the glory unto you. In Jesus' holy name, we pray together and we say, Amen. 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 Thank you. We will invite the church to stand as you are able and help us to sing these two uh, songs as we are praising and worshiping God together.
the time. Amen. Oh, God is good indeed. At the center of our life, we have God. In everything, God is the one we rely on. He's our hope. He's our strength. And He's everything in our life. That's why we are singing this song saying, at the center of it, oh Lord, you are the one that we see with our eyes. Sing the song from your heart. Tell God what you know about God. Let God know that without Him, you, are, you cannot do anything. Let God be at the center of your life. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. 
church. God is good again all the time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have a list of all the announcements. I don't know where, but I will go with Jessica. She'll pick me up. But uh, before you wait for a minute, uh, I just want to share with you, God, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when you came here, they gave you a bulletin. Do you have a bulletin? Yes. Praise the Lord. In the bulletin, we have put uh, the second uh, shit like this, uh, a paper, small paper like this. Please take it home. Take it home and give it to your friends, your neighbor. Uh, invite them to church, amen? Yeah, some of you are scared and say, oh, no, I don't know. You don't, you don't have an idea. Put it in your car, in your wallet, in your purse. You might show up in, uh, in a shop. Um, somebody will end up to talk about the church. Oh, yeah, I've got this, you know? I'm inviting you to my church. You can come in. Everything is on this. You never know what you do, my brothers and sisters. Some of you, uh, many of us, we are here because somebody invited us to church. Amen? I, 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 I'm, I'm now a believer in Christ because of my neighbor. Yeah. My neighbor used to be very passive. God, let's go to church. Let's go to Methodist church. Let's go. It was like, I, it was like a problem in my life. Oh, my goodness. Everywhere. Let's go. Let's go. But one day, I decided I start going. Amen? Because somebody has done it. So please, take this home. Don't leave it here. You can leave the bulletin. It's fine. But take this here. Take it in your car and leave it there. Amen? Or I have a couple announcements to make quickly. Number one, drivers. Uh, I think I missed. Uh, um, is you corrected? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, this guy, Travis, is one of our brothers. I remember Travis joined me and Chris Penmuna, I think Sophie Faida, and Pastor Nancy. We start praying with Travis here. Uh, we started praying with this guy here, and then God called him to start a ministry on campus with an MSU student. I'm telling you, this is not the place where this guy is, 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 he has faith in Jesus Christ like no one else. He's making disciples of Jesus Christ on campus. I just wanna, I want to thank God because I met this guy who was single, and now he's married. Now he's got a baby. He's catching me up. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the beauty of being brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ. Amen? You celebrate with your brothers and sisters. This guy, he used to come, and I remember him during snow time, and they used to come, Pastor Eric, you know, are we having prayer then? We, every Monday, this guy was here praying with us. Praying with us. He's, I remember him some, sometimes he said, I'm, we have classes, but I'm, I'm come, I'm, I have to come first for Jesus Christ and go back to classes. And he finished from MSU, and God opened a ministry for him. Now he's a missionary. He's our missionary. We support his mission, his, his work as a church. We support him financially and prayerfully. We do that as a church because he has to live with his wife. We need some uh, things to live for. Amen? All right, praise the Lord. I just want to share with you that this is what God is doing. Another announcement. 
All right. Uh, we, this is what we call exercise pro, uh, fitness. I love this. Fitness program. They do meet here at 1030 on Monday. So if you, feel, you want to do that, you know, you know, you want to make sure that you, you keep up your health. Please join them. It's for free. You don't pay. They join, they, are, they meet in the gym every, every Monday and Wednesday from 10.30 to 11.30. They are done. One hour. Uh, some of us, the doctor told us we need to do some exercise. So we are, we are thinking of joining them and we start doing those, start jumping up and down. Amen? All right, another one, please. Tutoring program. We started a tutoring program where we, when, where we tutors, uh, we tutored students. Uh, I've got homework. Please, this Thursday, uh, when we, they meet on Wednesday. This Wednesday, they are not meeting because of spring break. The following Wednesday, please come. Come with your homework, middle school and high schools, even college students bring. And we have changed, we changed a little bit with our new tutoring program. If you are willing to tutor, please see me and uh, we, can, we can help you. We, we need your help. Amen? Some of you... Uh, I know, I can see some of you, you have been tutored here. <laughs> and now you, are, you, you graduated. What if also you pay back? Amen? You come also, you help your brothers and sisters with homework. But this time we have changed. We have, profe- we have some uh, students from MSU and professors. They come while the students are eating at 5.30. They eat from 5.30 to 6. So they inspire them for their future. They talk to them about what, what are their dreams. You need a mentor, amen? You need someone who help you to dream bigger. Otherwise, you're too shallow. You always think about, this is what I'm going to do. But until you, you are exposed somewhere and someone will help you. So they take 30 minutes to help our kid to dream big, to go for colleges. And they are, they are, they are willing even to help them to write essays and write things, scholarship. They are willing to do that. So we are trying to change our tutoring program. Amen? So that's, the, that's what we do. Another announcement to make. Bible study. Folks, come for Bible study. Amen? <laughs> come on Thursday. And actually we have it even online. If you want to stay from home, you can ask me for a, uh, a link. I'll give you a link. You join and uh, you you'll be part of the Bible study. Let me tell you. You never know the Bible by thinking that I want to go to seminary. No. You get into it with your friends. That's when you get to know deeper the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So every Thursday, but this Thursday we are not meeting because of service. We have a service at 6.30. Let's go on. Prayer time. Oh my goodness. Oh God. Hallelujah. The smallest group in any ministry in this world is prayer. Prayer, that's when you find, ah, that's only pastor pray. No, it is not about only pastors. Folks, wake up. Amen? See, uh, Christians, we pray every Wednesday from 6.15 to 7.15. We are done. And we pray also online. Midnight, we pray. Some of you, you have been praying and you stop praying. I am inviting you to come back to the life of prayer. Yes, indeed, you pray at home, you pray. I do that too. But I'm telling you, there is a power when people come together and pray and mountain moves. Amen? I guarantee you. I'm telling you, when people come together, start marching and praying together. Remember the story of Joshua when God said, Joshua, tell my people to walk seven days. He never told Joshua to walk by himself. He said, walk together. And it was a sign of prayer. They were praying, walking, praying, walking. And what happened? The wall did fall. Amen? That's the power of coming together and pray. Whenever you have, you can join us at midnight. So some of you, you know, you don't get sleep. You have these bad dreams. <laughs> yeah, you just wake up. Ah, scary. Pick up the phone at midnight on Thursday. Join us. We have people from Canada. They are joining for prayer here. I've got two sisters who are joining from Canada. We pray together at midnight, from midnight to 1 a.m. So come and pray. On Saturday, we pray again on Saturday, folks. Saturday at 5 p.m. You come here, we pray for an hour. Amen? So I'm encouraging you to join us. Join us, please. Join us. Uh, Another uh, camp day, camp. Is coming up. We are going to provide uh, 
uh, sign up sheet very soon. Uh, make sure you, you are putting your calendar. That's only elementary. They are going to come for camp, uh, for day camp here in the building, three days. Uh, and uh, we have youth camp is coming up as well. Middle school and high school, they are going to sport camp. And now we let go again. All right, this is the week I'm talking about. We call it in a Christian walking. They call it the Holy Week. <laughs> and I wonder why we only walk holy. We just, we just take only one week to walk holy. We let, I pray God help us to walk every day holy. The spirit of holiness. Amen. But this week we focus on holiness. I'm inviting you. At 6.30 we meet here. 6.30 on Thursday. Pastor Nancy is going to preach and the chance of choir will sing. And on, on Thursday, on Friday, we are going to have Brother Jacob is going to sing and Pastor Rick will preach. Good Friday, the day when you're living God. Amen? When Jesus, the day when Jesus went through a lot, pain, and after three days, he came back to life. Amen? This is what I'm always saying when Jesus died. Jesus went in hell and started saving because he's so good. God is so good. He went in hell and said, you need some, some grace. Come here. You, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. He picked up some of the people. He came back again to life after three days. Amen? So on Sunday, we have Resurrection Sunday. Um, please invite your neighbor and friend to come and celebrate the, the, the day Jesus Christ rose again. Another one? Oh, African University trip. We have two weeks to go. Only two weeks to go. We are going to African University. Thank you for your generosity. We have raised a lot of money. We are taking to the orphans in Zimbabwe. We are going to tell you on the 7th how much you raise. Amen? On the 7th, we are going to tell you how much we raise. We are going to be able to meet students. Uh, we are going to be able to meet students. Uh, uh, some, of, some, of uh, some of our members from the church and the church as well. We pay scholarships. In French, we call it books d'études. Our church helps some student from, a part of, from different part of the Africa to go to African University. We pay scholarship. So we are looking forward to meet this student and take picture of them and ask them, how is school? How are you doing? We are taking some gifts for them, flash drivers. And, and actually one of the professors from MSU even asked, he said he's going to bring an iPad for one of the students. So we're going to take it for him. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm so excited when you become a blesser to a uh, in the life of someone. It's always good. Amen? Be like one of them. Amen? <laughs> All right. Another one. I think we are done. Oh, the last one. All right. The last one. If this is your first time to worship with us, uh, please sign up. There's a connection card. You put your name down, your phone number, uh, your email address if you do have, your prayer request because we are going to pray for you. And then Pastor Eric will reach out to you the following day and just check on you. Thank you for being here, especially this, if this is your first time to worship with us. We really welcome you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to invite the voice of God to give us a performance song. And uh, may God really bless us all.
Thank you, voice of God. May God bless you. All right, we're going to take this time and hear the word of the Lord. The song my brother and my sister in Christ, they just sing is in French. That's the beauty of hope community, amen? We have all these languages, hallelujah. So, we want God. It's a powerful song, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a very powerful song. As we repent before the Lord Jesus Christ, we allow him to do whatever he wants in our lives. In our lives, and we want him to take over our lives. Amen? All right. Uh, we are going to hear this word. The reason why they gave you this, did you get this? All right. Did you get this? All right. You know, when, we're, when the, the voice of God are going to sing the last song, I want you to start singing. We are singing. We are doing this. Amen? I know. We are, today is the day when Jesus entered. Jerusalem and the people, they celebrated his coming into the city with palms. They celebrated the palms. Amen? Amen? All right. We are going to hear the word of God together, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. God, help me to finish because it's a long sermon. Amen? <laughs> oh, God, have mercy on us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come before your throne of grace and I thank you for this opportunity. I pray, open the floodgate of heaven, pour out your Holy Spirit. Let the presence of Jesus Christ enter in our lives as you entered in Jerusalem. Lord, our heart is full, is in need of you. We pray for you alone to enter. I pray, pour out your Holy Spirit to open our eyes to see, our, eye, our ears to hear, um, your heart to hear your word, God. Lord, as I stand before your children, may you be increased as I decrease. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. My brothers and sisters in Christ, before I preach, I just want to, uh, before I read the scripture, I want you to lift up uh, the family of Gina uh, and David. Uh, they are part of our church. They lost, uh, they are not, no one is here. By the way, um, one of the daughters, uh, she's part of the Unity Dance. Uh, they lost, uh, uh, the, Gina lost uh, a mother in Africa. She passed away last week. So pray for her, amen? Pray for the whole family. And one of her daughters, Dancy, her name is, her name is Neema. Neema, one of the little girls, she always having a lot of smile on, his, on, her, on her faces. So she lost her grandmother in Africa. The thing is, with this family, they are so connected. Um, <laughs> it's, very, it's so painful as uh, they are going through all this. Gina lost her mother, actually... Um, Samuel's wife called me and said she now lost her mother. And then after talking to her, um, in about 20 minutes, and David called me and said I lost my sister. So they are related. So she now lost the mother, but David lost a sister. Both of them, they worship with us. They, they are members of our church. So pray, with, pray for them. They are going through a lot. Amen. Pray for them. If you need address to go and come for them, uh, please let me know. I'll give you their addresses. All right. Uh, another last thing I, I forgot to announce. A lot of announcement. I'm sorry, folks. We talk about you guys keeping one, uh, a dollar. Remember that? 40 days, you keep one dollar. You bring $40, and we are going to give it to food ministry. So I just want to remind you. I'm just going to. I'm just going to remind you uh, that uh, I'm reminding you that next, uh, next Sunday is the last Sunday to bring your $40. <laughs> Amen? If you want to bring $50, bring it. Uh, if you are waiting for tax to return, it's all right. Amen? So bring it. $40 we are going to give to our ministry. 40 days of keeping $1 in somewhere in your, in your house. Praise the Lord. Let's, uh, let's read the scripture now. We are reading from the book of Matthew 21. It's a familiar scripture. 
uh, the story about Jesus going into Jerusalem. Uh, the Bible says this. Hallelujah. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethany on the Mount of Olive, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied the, the, the donkey tied there with the coats by her. Untie them and bring them to me. Anyway, <laughs> I love that. And if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. Amen? All right. And he will send them right. This, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a coat, the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and placed their clothes on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd sprayed their clothes and on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spray them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna, son of David. And I put a picture there. I love that. That's what happened when Jesus entered Jerusalem. This morning I'm going to preach. God help me to finish. Oh God, hallelujah. I'm going to preach on the message, use me, Lord. Can you say that with me? Use me, Lord. I have this slide on the, on the use me, Lord. Say it again. Use me, Lord. God wants to use you. God wants to use you because he loves you and you are the chosen. This is one of, uh, one of the stories you will find in all Gospel saying the same thing like the Lord need them. I mean, it is the only time in the scripture where Jesus actually says the Lord has need them. But when you think about it, God is God all by himself. Amen? He has no need. God does not, does not have need. God has no need. He is self-existent. He is all-powerful. You and I, you need water. You and I, you need a car. You need a house. You need, you need this and that. But God need nothing. He need nothing. Actually, in the book of Psalm 20, the Bible says, If I were hungry, do you think I would, have, I would ask you for food? I owe the kettles of a thousand of hills. He owe all of them. He owes them. It belongs to him. I own, I own the, the, the earth and its fullness. I don't need anything. Then this is a situation when he came in in that place in the New Testament. We are told that Jesus is entering into the last week of uh, his physical life here on earth. And he says, I need an animal. I need a donkey. What I want you to see is, Jesus did not say, I need a white a stallion horse. Did you see that horse? Many of you, you want, I want to get married and ride on that horse. I want to fly, you know. I want to ride on that. Jesus never wanted that horse. Jesus never said, I need a powerful muscles, massive horse that will project an image of power and glory. He never said that. But Jesus said this, I need that dirty donkey. Look at what Jesus needed, a donkey. I need a donkey. And if they try to stop you, tell them the Lord needs him. A donkey, let me give you a definition of a donkey. A donkey is a burden bearer. Burden bearer. I will come riding on a humble donkey. In other words, Jesus is just saying, I do not build my church 
out of a powerful people. But I build my church out of a humble thing. Amen? That's where I build my church. I, I don't build my church out of uh, uh, people who are trying to understand me. I build my church out of, uh, I build my church out of the people who believe in me. That's how the church started. Only those who believe in Jesus. I use people who get up under a load and feel like they can't keep on going, but they bear the load. I use people who are burden bearers. If ever God needed a burden bearers, it is in this time that I'm living now. In other words, if ever God needed a church to preach the truth with love and reach out to the soul, lost, you are who are dying right now. It is right now in this generation we are living. The generation we are living, this is the time where God is looking for burden bearers. Whatever the world goes into from this point forward, it will not stop us as a church to share the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? We will keep up under the burden of carrying Jesus into the city of Lansing and in the world. The church was not built on a muscle's massive host. The strong and the powerful. God chose humble people like fishermen to build the church. He chose no more ordinary and common people who could get up under the Lord. Amen. Under the Lord, I put it this way. God needs people who will carry a load, people who are willing to have a burden about the church, about the God kingdom perspective, and about souls that are lost, a burden on the multitude of people who are Christless in this world. God is in need of those people. And if you are not willing to do that, Friend, I want to say this to you. I don't care how much talents you have. I don't care how much power you have. I don't care how much education you have, God, because we are not worth much to Jesus Christ. We are nothing before Jesus. Amen? We are nothing. Whatever we have. The first thing Jesus looked for when he decided if he's going to use you and choose you, is can you carry a burden? Amen? Can you carry a burden? Folks, it is a burden to carry Jesus Christ, especially today. Especially we are living in this world today, it is a burden to carry the truth. If you speak the truth, people will come against you. It is a burden. I want you today to see and understand yourself. Carrying Jesus Christ is like a donkey loaded with, down with bags of carrot and box of tomatoes. You see the donkey? It's so heavy. Try to become a donkey and put that tomato on you. You'll see. you come back as a human being. Say, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be a donkey anymore. It's heavy. And my, in my life, you know, uh, it is so heavy. I've never seen a pretty donkey. Have you ever seen a pretty donkey? Donkeys are always dirty and they smell. But God used them. Jesus used a donkey. God looks for somebody who can take a load and keep moving. But you do not break. That's a good thing. When Jesus is on you, you don't break. You keep going. You keep going. You keep going. You do not change. You do not give up. You do not quit. And you do not give in when we have Jesus Christ on you. Amen? You don't give up no matter what because you have Jesus. You are working with Jesus Christ. You don't break. I may not be a horse, but I'm going to win the race, the prize. Because there will be a day when you find yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ, you hear this voice. Well done, good, and seven. You have done it. I'm looking forward to that day. Imagine at the most critical moment of his life, our Lord Jesus Christ chose and said, I need a donkey. I need a donkey. 
Are we not possible the most critical time in, in our Christian faith journey? We are. We are. People, Christians are dying in this world if you don't know that. We are. I see the exact qualification of what kind of people God needs and is looking for to use in these days. And I'm going to share with you six qualifications that God is want, want to use you. Amen? If you have a pen, write it down. Six of them. If you have a pencil, keep writing it. It's very important. Hallelujah. Number one. Number one I'm going to share. Jesus calls the unqualified. Amen? When we read a story, we'll hear from the book of Luke 19, the Bible says that this donkey, this animal, never been uh, ridden before. That means this donkey was unqualified. That means this donkey was untrained. That means this donkey was never been broken before. That means this donkey never had a mentor. He never had a mentor. No one trained the donkey out to carry heavy load. He was unqualified. And Jesus picked the donkey who was unqualified. So God is looking for the unqualified. Sometimes we think that we have to be something greater before God uses us. Not that's wrong. God can use even those who are unqualified. Amen? This donkey had never been ridden before. Jesus called the unqualified. Sometimes you feel unimportant. That, uh, that is what Jesus is looking for when you feel that way. When God called me, I remember when God called me when I was in Zimbabwe. Actually, I'm looking forward to going two weeks. And I'm preaching on Wednesday in the, in the place I got baptized. That's where I got my iris. When God called me, I didn't know how to, what, I didn't know what to do. Everything I'm doing here, I never knew it. Amen? I'm telling you. I never knew it when God called me. But the good thing is, when he called me, when, when, when he, did, he called me, he said, you just let me ride with you. Jesus said, let me ride with you, Eric. I will ride with you. I will, uh, let, me, let me just take you down the road. I will train you along the way. I will mentor you along the way. I will teach you along the way. I will use you for my glory. It's all about on the way. Amen? Many people are afraid of stepping up and serving God. You think like you are going to have all the, everything the same day. No, there are things that come as God called you on the way. Amen? It is on the way when you know how to pray. It is on the way you know how to speak in tongues. It is on the way you know how to fast. It is on the way you know how to obey God. It is on the way you follow him on the way, not the same day. Amen? That's what happened. God wants to use you. I don't need a qualify. God says, I don't need a horse. I use a donkey and it will bring glory to my name. You may not know how to read Hebrew theology. It's fine. You don't need that. You may not know how to read Greek. It's fine. You may not know how to speak French. It's fine. The calling is a calling. Amen. We have missionaries who left America speaking English, went to Congo and preached. You think they used to preach in what? In French? They never knew any word in French, even Swahili. But they shared the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So it doesn't matter which language you speak, but what is matter is oh, you yourself to surrender and say, God, use me. Amen? Praise the Lord. The second, the second one is this. People, they don't like this. The greatest blessings come from the greatest burden that you bear. The burden that the donkey bear was Jesus. But out of the heaviest burden came the greatest blessing. In other words, what I'm saying is this. The burden the donkey did bear was the blessing the donkey carried. It is true today. I hear many people, many Christians who are always saying, I want God to bless me. Uh, they, they talk about blessing so much, but they don't want to be to carry the burden. Amen? 
They talk about blessing. I've heard a lot of Christians, blessing, blessing. This is the year I want God to bless me. This is my year. I heard you. Uh -huh. This is my year. This year God will do that. Yes, indeed, God will do that. But are you willing to carry the burden? That's where your blessings are. God, I want you to bless me, but the greatest burden is what you produce, the greatest blessing in the life. When I look at this church today, you have been so, you have, you have no idea the, the burden that has been for many in this church. You have no idea the burden of the leaders of this church they went through. The burden of you together we went through to stand for the glory of God. It was a burden, amen? It was not easy, I'm telling you. You cannot get up under the burden and the blessing does not start to manifest. The blessing will come. I want you to understand there is a burden to carry Jesus Christ. The burden of being faithful to the living word of God. There is a burden to be faithful to the living word of God. There is a burden. Amen? There is. There is. There is a burden. Today, this new generation of Christian believers wants only the blessing, but they do not want the reproach of the burden of carrying Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is, if the church and this new generation are not willing to bury the burden of Jesus Christ, you can't have the blessing of Jesus Christ. We need to carry the burden. Amen? We need. There is a burden to say no when the flesh says yes. Amen? There is a burden. I know what it means. There is a burden to say my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Not the temple of anything can come into my body. There is a burden to say that. There's a pain. But you are doing it because there's a blessing. Amen? Amen? There is a burden to say, I believe in Jesus Christ in this generation. Then other people said, maybe. There is a burden. Amen? There is a burden when you stand on the truth. You said, I believe in the power. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I believe in miracle. There is a burden. There is a burden. There is a burden and a willing. The, 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 <coughs> there is a burden. It will be a, it will, it, there is a burden not to be ashamed of preaching the gospel and sharing the love of Jesus Christ. I'm glad to bury the burden of Jesus Christ in this generation and the next generation. You will be mocked, my friend, let me tell you. People are going to mock you because you believe in Jesus Christ. People are going to persecute you because you believe in Jesus Christ. People are going to see whatever they want. They are going to make fun on, of, of you because you believe in Jesus Christ. It is a burden. It is a burden. People are going to misunderstand you because you believe in Jesus Christ. There's a burden. Try your best, amen? Try your best to live by the burden of Jesus Christ. Try your best every day. Try your best. You cannot have the blessing of this book without bearing the burden of this book. You need to bury the, bur the burden as well. Number three. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. Bear with me. Number three. You carry the burden. Jesus gets what? The glory. Mm -hmm. Because many of you, many Christians, is not that way. It's not that way. How many of you can say today, Pastor Eric, God has blessed me so much. I don't deserve to live in the house I'm living right now. Pastor, God has blessed me so much. I don't deserve to have the car I'm driving right now. If you deserve it, you don't deserve even the car you are driving. It's just God's blessing. Amen? Pastor, Eric, I don't deserve to be where I am today. Even myself, I don't deserve to be where I am today. It's just God's blessings. I don't deserve the life I live today, Pastor Eric. Uh, God has been good to me, Pastor Eric. Now, listen to, to this. Just because you carry the load does not mean you get the glory. Amen? Because you carry the blessing does not mean you have to get the glory. 
Many Christians, many people, they do that. When God, when Jesus got on the donkey and they started coming into the city of Jerusalem, the people took their clothes, their coats off, and threw them down on the ground. And they started shouting and singing, Hosanna, son of David. Hosanna, son of David. They start giving glory. I can see the donkey doing this. It's not me. It's that guy. It's not me. It's that guy who received the glory. Amen? But many, many Christians, many believers, many, many nations today, it's about me, 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 me. I'm the one who did it. Friend, my brothers and sisters in Christ, give God the glory. Amen? Give God the glory. He deserves to receive all the glory. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Look, if, if you ever have a gift that can move multitude of people, you better remember your job is to carry the burden and make sure you don't get the glory. Amen? You don't get the glory. Even if you are, you are so good, you are a good speaker, you can speak, people can move, you can preach, you can pray in tongues, but make sure you don't get God glory. Amen? Is the only God received the glory. You are a donkey, I'm a donkey. And every time I go like this, the, the person on me receives the glory. Amen? My brothers and sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. The glory goes to the one that you are carrying. Jesus Christ get the glory and the hosanna, not you and not me. Do not ever forget that. We better realize that our talents are not enough and our gifts are not enough without Jesus Christ who get the praise. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, businessmen, if we have businessmen in our churches, you better give God the glory. If we do have doctors in our church, you better give God the glory. If we have preachers and singers, you better give God the glory. Amen? Not your glory, it's God's glory. If you have, you have people who can do whatever they want to do for God's glory, give God the glory. You better give God the glory. You better give God the glory if He made you to be in America. Amen? Amen? Hey, folks, amen? amen? It is by God's glory you are in America. And he deserves to give to receive all the glory. Personally, I feel very humble. Amen. It is by God's glory. I give God all the glory. Being in America, you know, some of you, because I knew this guy, and because I knew this guy is the one you are giving praise to that person. Give praise to God. Amen. Give praise to God. Give praise to God. You better give him the glory. Hallelujah. The fourth one. I'm coming. I told you to write it down. I'm coming. We are going to finish this. You carry the burden, but Jesus does the heavy lifting. <laughs> That's the good thing with Jesus. Amen? All he asks us to do is to have him right. He says, when you get in a situation that is too heavy... I will do the heavy lifting. How many of you want Jesus to do the heavy lifting? <laughs> I need that. Oh, Pastor Eric, what are you talking about? Prove it. Let me prove it to you. Look at the, the scripture. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, the Bible said, Jesus Christ carry our sorrow and our pain. Did you hear that? It is not your company carry your sorrow. It is not your community carry your sorrow. It is not your mother, your father, or your pastor. It is Jesus who carry the sorrow and the pain. Did you hear that? Jesus carried the, the, the sorrow and the pain. When, family, when, when families are broken, when you are standing at the grave of someone who lost his beloved one, our, you, you lost your mother, you lost your baby, you lost your son, you lost your daughter, your co-worker. You know what happened? Ask me, I'm a pastor. I've experienced that when we do funeral. You know, sometimes you think like we do, we do, do nothing. It's Jesus who carried the burden of the people and the pain. 
when they are going through pain, it is Jesus who carries it for them. We are just doing the talking. Amen? When we say God comfort them, it is God who is comforting them. It is Jesus who carries the burden. Oh, Pastor Eric, you know, I don't understand that. that I want to prove it again. Matthew, uh, De- uh, Jessica, put that. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come, The Bible says, come unto me, all who are weary and heavy lifting. I will give you what? Rest. Life is so heavy. Family is so heavy. Finances feel like it is so heavy. But Jesus says, let me give you rest for your soul. And my yoke is easy. My burden you carry is light. Amen? All right, number five. Almost done. Number five. Jesus took, Jesus looked for endurance, not speed. Many Christians, they love speeding too much. Please slow down. Amen? Slow down. That's why Jesus never pick up a horse. Because the horse is like that. But a donkey. Jesus loves to walk with donkeys. Those who are speeding too much, slow down. Amen? Amen? (laughs) A donkey is built for endurance, not speed. I believe this is the reason why Jesus picked that donkey. He he he, he, He did choose a donkey so that he can teach us something today. Jesus is using us all. God does not want you to make a quick race. God does not want you to compare. Many of you are comparing. Look at that church. Look at that church. Mm -mm. We have Jesus. Amen? Amen? Oh, that's church. They are doing a lot. They are doing a lot. Yeah, let them do it. Me, I'm just, me, I'm not a host. If you want to be a host, please go. That church. Me, I'm just going like a donkey. Endurance. Amen? Why? Because I love Jesus to walk with me slowly. I'm not a, I'm not a host. It is biblical. Read that. The book of, that's why I'm encouraging you to read the Bible. Look at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 11. It says, the race is not to the fast. You better listen to this preacher, friend. The, king, the kind of people that God need and choose and use are the people who endure. Because there is going to come a time when the Lord get heavy. Heavy, I'm telling you. There is going to come a time when the people, enemies whisper to you. And they are telling you, quit, give up, and say, and say you, are, you are going nowhere with that church. Leave that church. Nothing is going to happen in that church. You are going to complete fail. You do not matter in this church. You are not important. That's wrong. Now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God wants you to become like a donkey. Endure. Amen. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. You are nothing. People are whispering. Why are you going to that church? You are nothing. No. Jesus needs you. Amen? You carry. Jesus is looking for people are going to endure. Not those who are speeding up. Church, let us endure, not speeding. Because Jesus looked for that. We may not be first. Let me, I put it this way. We may not be first in, this, in the city of Lansing. We may not be first, the best church. We may not be the pretty church in the city of Lansing. But we are going to get there because we have what? We have Jesus Christ. Amen? It will, we will not quit. We will not stop sharing the love of Jesus Christ. You have to watch out. Because the enemies are extinguishing fire on you. Be on fire for Jesus Christ. Amen? Be on fire for Jesus Christ. Your enemy is discouraging you every day. They are always there. (laughs) Amen? Hallelujah. You have to watch out. The last one is this. Now I'm going to invite the the band, uh, the, 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 the... The voice of God, you can come up now. The last one is this. You can't get to Jesus until you get untied. Did you see that? You can. The Bible says 
the donkey was what? Tied to, the, to, a, to a post. And Jesus said to set the donkey free and lead the donkey to me. Jesus Christ can set you free through salvation and the gift of grace this morning. But it is not enough. You have to let him lead you. Amen. Many times we are saved, but we refuse Jesus to lead us. We have many Christians who are saved, but they don't want Jesus to lead them. When Jesus, Jesus leads you, you are the right place. Amen. Somebody had to lead a donkey to his purpose in Jesus. If you want Jesus to use you, you have to be willing to be untied and then led. Led. I mean it, led. It's not only untidy, but you have to let him lead in you. Amen? It was not Jesus who lose the donkey. It was someone that Jesus had put there to lead him to get to his purpose. Watch this, I'm done. As long as you are tied to a place every day of your life, you will never change. All you see is what you are tied to. Amen? Let me put it in this way. Let me say it this way. If you are tied to alcohol addiction, that's all you see. If you are tied to drug addiction, that's all you see. If you are tied to gossip and lies, that's all you see every day. If you are tied to immoral lifestyles, that's all that you're going to see. If you are tied to guilt and shame, that's all you see every day. You need to untie yourself. Amen? That's all you see. Every day you lie. You need a degree in liars, in lying. Gossiping. You are always gossiping. You are every day. If you don't do it, you feel like something is missing in you. You are tied to. I have a good news for you. The surrounding of your life never change as long as you are tied to it. But today, you, if you allow Jesus Christ to untie you and lead you, he will do it today. Amen? He's going to do it today, folks. He will take you to a place where you have ne- your surrounding will change. You will be on the way to Jerusalem without a visa. You will be on the way to Washington, D.C. without a visa. You are, when you go, when Jesus untied you, you will be on the way to the better place. Amen? You will be. I have a question. I don't want you to answer me. <laughs> I put it, yeah, put that in. I love that. You know, did you see that picture? One is tied up. You see where he is? He was, he's like, in, he is like in, the, in, the, in the place where he got lost. And you see where Jesus is now on the donkey? White. You see that? The light. So I have a question. Are you willing to disconnect from what is holding you back because the Lord needs you and wants to use you? Are you willing today? If you are willing, today we're going to pray. And look at what happened now. Put that one, Jessica, please. No, the other one. I love that. Do you want the surrounding of your life to change because Jesus Christ can take you to a new places, new environment, new people, even new relationship? He can do that. He can do that. He can do that. I'm a living testimony because I remember those days. My surrounding was just shallow. I remember the people that I used to walk with, they used to have one language, the world did language. But when God changed my life, he took me to a different people. I've met many Christians in my life who can speak the truth into my life. I've met many believers who pray like no one else. I met, I've met people who have journeyed with the Lord Jesus for 35 years. They said they are believers. I've met them because he untied me. Amen. When you, when you get untied, Jesus will take you different places. Even relationship will change. You are going to find out that even the people you are getting to know, they are bringing more to you in your life. Amen? 
So we're going to take this moment. I'm going to invite the band to come up. We're going to pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can come up here. Hallelujah. The voice of God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to take this moment as they are coming up here. We have a few minutes. God needs you. God needs you. Untied yourself. He wants you, he wants to, care, he wants you to carry him. I'm glad that I'm, I'm willing to carry Jesus wherever I go. Amen? How many? I'm going to invite you today. If you are one of them, you feel like, oh, this is really, I need Jesus to untie me. I need to carry the burden. I need Jesus Christ to receive all the praise. We're going to pray with you. Amen? We're going to pray with you. We're going to invite you to lift up your hand like this. If you want to come here on the altar, you can still come and kneel. And then we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. If you want to stand up, you can still stand. We are going to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you know that uh, this is me, God is speaking to me. I need to carry the burden. I've been speeding up things. I've been going here and there trying to find the peace. But Jesus said, I am the peace maker. And I want you to walk with me. Maybe somehow you used to say, me, 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 me. It's always me instead of him. I'm inviting you to lift up your hand as a Lord. Please take that away out of, take, take that out of me. Untied me, Lord. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is the day that God is looking for us like donkeys. I want, to, I want to ride with you. Jesus said, I want to ride with you, my daughter. I want to ride with you, my son. I want to ride with you. I want to go with you to different places. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace this morning. We acknowledge your presence, your mighty presence this morning. Father, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Let Jesus ride over every single child of yours in Jesus' holy name. Christ the Lord, we present our lives before you as donkeys this morning. We command the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ to ride on us in Jesus' holy name. Let Jesus ride on us. I pray in the name of Jesus for those who have been tied up, oh God, hallelujah, tied up to addiction, tied up to gossip, tied up, Lord, to lies, tied up, Lord, to pride. I pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost, oh God, and tie them, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' holy name, and tie them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who have been walking with pride in their lives, I pray in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit and tie them, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you and tie our church from pride and tie our church from speed and tie our church, Father God, from gossip and tie our church, Father, from unbelief. We want to believe. We want to walk with you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene. Holy Jesus, may your presence be revealed. May your glory, O oh God, goes back to you in Jesus' name. Every single child of yours, we have raised up their hand up, God. Hear their prayer. Hallelujah. And tie them, Lord. And tie them, Lord. Holy Spirit, and tie them, Lord, from anything in the name of Jesus, which does not confess your name in Jesus' holy name. Lord, today we pray as we walk in our daily life, we pray for Christ Jesus to ride with us. Ride with us on the road. Ride with us, oh God, at workplace. Ride with us. In everything we do, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We bless you, King of kings, the Lord of lords, for untiding us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray together and we say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. As the voice of God is about to sing for us, I'm going to invite you now. For those who are watching online, I know we have uh, time has gone up, but we're going to finish it. Amen? Amen. We're going to finish it. We're in the house of the Lord. Uh, it is time for you to give. Uh, those who are watching online, you can still give uh, online or send your check. May God bless you. May God really be with us in Jesus' holy name. Thank Hallelujah. you.
You can stand as you are able and we are going to sing this last song together in the presence of God. I will invite you, you can bring your offering. Let your heart, your mind, and your soul be before God. And let God release you. Allow God to touch your life and change your life forever today.
Aleluya. Aleluya. We are going to bless the Lord by this praising song. They say, there is no other God before you. I know you know the song is going, Yahweh, Yahweh. Holy is your name. There is no other God before you. Hallelujah. Remember Brother Jacob, he always say, nah, uh, 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 uh. Yeah. 
my brothers and sisters in Christ, that's a reminder that nobody, nobody is worthy to be praised except God. Amen? Amen. As you leave this place, remember this song, no way, no way. Everywhere you see God, you walk with him. Amen? Amen. Allow Jesus Christ to ride with you. You have a long journey to go. Allow him to ride with you. So, folks, uh, we are at the end of our service. Uh, remember to go in the gym and uh, uh, get your uh, box of food. If you know that anybody you know is not here today, please remember to carry that food for them. If you did not get a... Also, we have a children breakfast. Children breakfast. Thank you. Thank you, Donald. Uh, Remember this, remember if, you, if you, you are not able to sign up for food, we do have extra food there too. Praise the Lord, we sign up for many. So let us, uh, let us receive benediction. Allow me to say this, but don't feel offended, I'm going to say. I said first for myself, I'm a donkey. I want to become a donkey and I'm a donkey, amen? Yeah, you don't call me donkey, but I am a donkey. Uh, the reason why I say I'm a donkey, because I need Jesus to ride on me and ride with me. Amen. And I, I pray that this church consider itself like a donkey. Amen. I pray that every one of us here, you are like a donkey and you do this and let Jesus ride on you. And all the praise to him and he will take you different places in Jesus' holy name. Let us receive benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. If this is your first time, we have a Bible for you. We have a gift for you. We're going to give you a gift. Oh. All right.